வணக்கம் கிருஷ்ண மக்கன்சி மாசனோபா ஃபுகுவோகா ஹீ இஸ் மை இன்ஸ்பிரேஷன் எவ்ரி திங் தட் ஐவ் டன் ஹியர் அட் சாலிட்யூட் ஹேஸ் பீன் இன்ஸ்பயர்ட் பை ஹிஸ் வெரி வெல் நோன் புக் த ஒன் ஸ்ட்ரோ ரெவல்யூஷன் ஆஃப் விச் தேர் ஆர் வண்டர்ஃபுல் ட்ரான்ஸ்லேஷன்ஸ் இன் தமிழ் அண்ட் கனடா அண்ட் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் இண்டியன் லாங்குவேஜஸ் அஸ் வெல் அஸ் ஃப்ரெஞ்ச் அண்ட் அதர் லாங்குவேஜஸ் I was very fortunate to meet Fukuoka and that was quite an interesting uh, moment in my life. I had left Oroville for two years in the year 2000 after already having been here for nearly 10 years and I was doing my music in Paris. I did a couple of albums and I was teaching in the Krishnamurti school and different things. and i realized that everything i could possibly dream of doing in my life was here in oroville so i came back to solitude and i was very fortunate to be able to pick pick the project back up and i made a list of all the the reasons i had originally come to oroville um a bit sort of ala carlos castaneda um uh, recapitulation and on top of this list was fukuoka and the very next day someone gave me an invitation to go and meet fukuoka in the vandana shiva's farm in deradun and i thought i thought he was dead you know this it was like amazing you know i just acknowledged that this person was the reason i even started farming and and here i was with an invitation to go and meet him i had no money i had no no place to stay and somehow people said no you can stay with me i have a tent and and uh, another friend gave me money to travel so i spent 5 days with fukuoka in deradun and it was quite um quite an amazing time it was like meeting sort of your guru you know it was he was a very silent man he was already in 92 in a indigo kimono with a long white beard and the wooden chapels he didn't say so much he had a few translators a couple of japanese girls and one one sadhaji who spoke very good japanese and between them they translated his words and there are various things i remember one of them particularly was there's a very good friend of mine called purna ji who is a vipassana yogi and he was sitting in lotus position listening to fukuoka san and fukuoka pointed at him and said be like that that's enough what he was pointing out is that this is a deeply spiritual path and that this movement towards this deep understanding of nature which is essentially non-dualistic is not a matter of techniques i see a lot of people saying oh but you didn't follow fukuoka because he did this and this technique it's a bit like in oroville we say you know the mother said this and the, i mean this this philosophy of natural farming is really about allowing nature to emerge and i think that's what deeply inspired me by fukuoka in the beginning that it wasn't just a it's not just a technique to see if we can produce more ladies fingers you know it's something very profound and as he said there's that famous quote that i'm sure many of you who know fukuoka will know it this agriculture is not about the cultivation of crops it's about the cultivation of the the human soul and he really imbibed that um another thing he told us is he said he said to us very clearly only a fool will understand nature you know he said be be a fool because strategic mind has only created more and more mess At the moment I'm working on a theater piece. I don't know if you know but I'm also very much into theater and um it's it's a piece um from Fukuoka's book called Who is the Fool. And I I'll share with that with you in the next few weeks just to let you know that's coming up. But meeting Fukuoka was quite a quite an extraordinary moment in my life and I came back to Oroville after those 5 days of being with him and tried so many so many so many things and and you know through seeds left and right and made clay balls and through bought straw and did this and that but eventually i can see that what fukuoka was talking about is there's this essence of well-being this essence of nature which is i think what we call shakti in shakti in india it's it's the 
the power of nature. And if we, if we welcome that, if we honor that, if we recognize that, we start to see all these gifts of nature and we start to perceive the abundance of nature and we start to see how nature does things on her own. She starts offering us plants like the sundakai and the, the papaya and the rosella and the manatakali and, you know, and various weeds and seeds and flowers. And there is an ease and an elegance which really, um, which really is at the heart of this uh, relationship. But we've made this world where it's a struggle, you know, we, it's a struggle to, to keep going and to get more and to pull and pull. But I think that's a really the antithesis of what Fukuoka, Fukuoka was talking about. So, yeah, just to share with you a little bit about Fukuoka, we, we took him to the train when he was leaving and we very, very caringly, we brought him on the train and said goodbye to him. And, um, and that was the last I saw of him. But he, he, for me, his presence and his inspiration is very much part of the fabric of this farm. Many people ask me, I want to start farming. <coughs> I want to start permaculture. <coughs> what do I do? This and that. I say, read Masanobu Fukuoka. Read the One Straw Revolution. It's very easy to get hold of online. You know, read that book and read it again. And then read it again. Read it ten times. And you will get an insight into what really farming is, is about. Thank you very much.